what are we doing in a Jeep Wrangler? We're in a Jeep Wrangler on our way to Tennessee to pick up a truck that is for a new project. I know it's weird. The reason why I'm in a Jeep Wrangler is because this is a rental car. I was originally planning on taking one of my Duramaxes to Tennessee to pick up the project truck or the truck for the, for the new project. I was gonna take the LLY. Gearbox needs to be replaced. I mean, that truck is stout, but for some reason in my mind, I just don't trust it on a seven seven hour drive through the mountains if I haven't replaced like the front end parts like I wanted to. And also, I don't have a trailer. That was really the biggest part. I don't have a vehicle car trailer to be able to haul that truck back. So ultimately, what I'm doing is I got a rental. I was gonna get a small car, but they offered me this Jeep Wrangler for the same price. And this thing's got a turbo in it and it's scoot. So let me give you guys kind of my first hand experience with a Jeep Wrangler, because this is my first time ever really driving in one, especially on a long road trip. The drivability is not bad. Like the handling itself, it's pretty smooth. It's a smooth ride. It's not too bad because everything is stock. Jeep is a freaking box. So it catches all the wind and it's kind of swaying me side to side a little bit at certain times when it's, it gets super windy. But other than that, pretty good. I can kind of see why people like Jeeps because the Jeep life is pretty cool. I get excited whenever I see other Wranglers and I got wave at them. It is pretty noisy in here. This is a hard top, so I couldn't imagine what a soft top would be like. I forgot to mention the most important part. I have family members in Tennessee that I'm visiting and that's where I'm getting the truck for the new project. Forgot to mention that, so I'm not just going to Tennessee to pick up a vehicle. I'm going to Tennessee to see my family and then picking up a vehicle while I'm there. Quick update on the Jeep. Wow, stock Jeep and certain roads here in Tennessee. I, I mean, actually I'm still in Georgia. I get a death wobble and it's not fun. So the death wobble is real. I don't know how y'all Jeep people do it. Especially, I think we might get death wobble right here. Oh, yep, kind of. Yeah, it's, uh, it's not fun. I uh, just wanted to give you guys a little update. So this truck is the reason why I drove pretty much 14 hours to Tennessee. And before you guys ask, no, this truck is not. So this truck isn't gonna be a project truck on the channel, but uh, it does tie in together. So long story short, this truck belongs to a family member of ours, which it got passed out to my dad. And my dad's been looking at getting a 2500. He does have a 2014 1500 right now, which I'll show you guys in a second. Yeah, so this is his 2014 GMC Sierra 1500. It's got a six and a half inch zone lift kit with some NFAB steps and 35 inch Firestone destination. So yeah, uh, because he's got his truck lifted now, he, he said he can't go back to a stock truck. So either way, if he gets a 2500, I think we're gonna put a leveling kit in 35s or if he buys another uh, like a 2021 1500 he's definitely gonna do a six inch lift and another set of 35 so he has that truck and he's been thinking about trading that in for a 2500 and I've, I've really been trying to convince him to get a duramax he either wants to get a newer 2021 1500 or a duramax and so now that now that it got passed down to him um obviously he doesn't need this truck if he does just keep it it's a it's a depreciating asset the value is just going to keep dropping and he's really not going to drive this truck so what we're going to do is uh, because he's been wanting to trade in his other truck for a duramax we're going to be trading this in as well as his 1500 for a duramax just to give you guys a little quick walk around i don't know if you guys are even interested in this truck but it's an extended cab or i think it's called king cab and it's the sv 4x4 so a frontier on a 4x4 is kind of in a way rare to come by and inside is uh really nothing special it's just cloth seats and touchscreen radio and this truck surprisingly the uh, window sticker on this is like 
This is a 2019, so it's pretty much brand new. I think it's got maybe 17,000 miles on it, if that. Surprisingly, the window sticker on this is 30, 32, something like that. And uh, we're hoping to get about 23 in trade-in for this truck, and then maybe get about 28 for his, uh, his truck. Ultimately, he wants to get a Denali 2500. But um, there is a AT4 that he liked, and price is significantly cheaper for that AT, uh, AT4 compared to the Denali. So we are gonna go to a couple of dealerships and see what they will give us for this truck and the other truck. The reason why I'm making this video is because, well, either way, even if he buys a 1500, it's still gonna be a build. He wants to lift that truck. Because his current truck is lifted, it's on 35s, he does not want another stock truck. So either way, if he buys a 1500, he's gonna put a six inch lift and 35. So we're gonna document that on this channel. And if he buys a 2500, we're gonna be able to do a lot more stuff. Uh, it's gonna be a 2020 Duramax build. That makes it three 2020 builds on this channel, which is amazing. If you would have asked me beginning of 2020 that I'd have three trucks on this channel, three 2020 trucks on this channel, I would not have believed you. So if you're wondering, um, I'm documenting Mark Jeffcoat's Denali 2020 on this channel. He bought it bone stock and we're documenting every single upgrades and modifications that goes on that truck. And I got the tail end of Matthias's SEMA truck build that I have documented so far as well. So if you wanna check those out, they will be up here somewhere, but make sure to check out those 2020 builds. This Frontier isn't a build, but we are gonna trade it in towards a new truck for my dad in which I will use to make content for you guys. The hardest part right now is looking for a 2020 Duramax around here. He does live in Virginia and he just visiting for a couple of days. So while he's here for a couple of days, we're really trying to find a truck locally. Truck shopping begins. This Nissan, the trading value is about 25,000. And then the GMC behind us, is worth about 28,000. So we're gonna see what the dealerships are gonna offer. There's a couple of 2020s that we found that we might possibly get, but a lot of them are in transit. So that's kind of the, uh, the part that's not really helping us right now. People who have window tint will understand this. Uh, it's winter time, it's about 63 degrees here, which is fairly warm, but fairly cool, I would say. This truck has absolutely no tint whatsoever, and it is cooking me alive. The fact that all my trucks have like 5% tint, and uh, I get in a vehicle that has no tint, like my windows are up. Yeah, my windows are up, it's just that clear. And uh, yeah, the sun is just beaming right through, and I am burning up. And uh, even in Tennessee, where it was like 30 degrees, I was driving, and the sun was just cooking my legs, cooking my arm. All right, here's our first stop. Well, so this is the 2500 we came to look at. It's a silver SLT. However, we walked inside and asked him if we can take a look at this truck, but turns out it is sold. It sold a couple days ago. They put a deposit down. So this one is going to be no longer our option anymore to buy this truck. Quick updates. They did not have a vehicle that we were interested in. Also, uh, while we were there, we kind of asked what the trade-in value would be for both of the trucks. And they gave us the Kelly Blue Book value in which it was on the lower end of the value. So you know how Kelly Blue Book gives you like, yeah, this vehicle is between 21 to $24,000. And obviously they offer the 20, offer the lowest value first. I mean, that's how dealerships do it, obviously. And then you negotiate from there. We left because, well, there's no vehicle over there that we're interested in. We're driving about an hour to a dealership that does have a Denali. So we're gonna go check that out and possibly go home with that vehicle. This dealership is in a small little town. So we're going through the town to get there. I'm honestly not sure how big this dealership is because I've never actually been there. This is some serious small town vibes and I kind of like it a lot. All right, we're about to turn left up here. That's pretty cool. I'm not really sure if that's abandoned or if that's supposed to be like that. Kind of give you that Jumanji look. No, nah, it's definitely, eh, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, it's abandoned. 
let's turn today good god dealership number two for the day there's a lot of trucks here a lot of them are already lifted that's cool So this is a Chevy and a GMC dealership. So there should be plenty of stuff here. Uh, there's a Denali right there. Let's see. I guess we'll just park wherever. They have this little 1500 right here. I say little, but it's actually lifted and everything. This is the Rocky Ridge package, which means it's already built. I don't know if this Rocky Ridge vehicle is available where you're from, but this does have a 3.0 Duramax in it, which is pretty cool. Uh, only thing I don't like about it is it's the elevation, which is pretty much like your step above the uh, base model. But it's pretty cool to see a 3.0 Duramax out here, uh, especially in this color because I love it. And uh, it's already lifted, already kind of decked out. Um, if you guys are interested, I might be able to do a video uh, comparing like the Rocky Ridge package, which means it's already lifted and decked out versus you buying one stock and uh, modifying it yourself i could do like a cost difference but this is the denali that we're looking at right now 2021 which comes with the with the power steps from the factory which is pretty cool this is the only 2500 they have available but they do have an at4 white that's in transit so we might actually be getting that one instead of this one well guys it's official that is a Duramax owner now he bought a Denali after a decent amount of negotiation a decent good bit of lowballing on the uh, trade-ins they lowballed big time the first time which we kind of expected but um they were cool about it and they kind of worked with us a little bit and uh, yeah he decided on a Denali 2500 it's gonna be really cool uh, his plan is to do a uh, leveling kit on it and some 35 so right now I, I mean everything is like going through my mind on what we're gonna do I might maybe surprise him with a couple of color matching stuff on the, on the Denali I might do the kryptonite leveling kit which includes like the control arms uh, shocks shock extenders and the keys so yeah leave your uh, comments below I mean he's gonna keep it he's gonna keep it pretty simple but um, I am gonna document everything that we do with that truck we're detailing it right now and I'll show you guys whenever they get done with it here's a Denali 1500 with the tow mirrors which i'm sure they might be towing with it but it always makes me kind of laugh because the 1500s look so soft and kind of small and then they put those big old tow mirrors that go on the 2500 the placement of it is uh is a little awkward like uh most people don't like that because it kind of looks like a broken arm denali comes with the factory steps check this out there you go that's pretty cool saying our last goodbyes traded this and this for the Denali right there.